What I want to uh, present today and talk about today is uh, an alternative view to concurrency on all of the improvements we, we've done in the meantime. So uh, ZOSTM will be uh, two years old in, uh, in a couple of days, I think, because it was unveiled on Scala in 2019. And since then, we've been consistently shipping new features, uh, which will hopefully result in a better and even more usable software transactional memory for Scala. So uh, I would divide my talk in uh, roughly four sections. The first one will try to uh, give us a reminder to how our road to concurrent programmers uh, was. Uh, then I will try to motivate the whole idea behind software transactional memory. And finally, to dig into the changes shipped in uh, that will be shipped in 2.x and uh, some benchmark results obtained with it. So uh, back in the days when you started with uh, concurrency, you were probably presented with all of the need uh, to parallelize your software, to utilize all of the cores you have. You heard here and there about Moore's law and that's all fine. We all see uh, the benefits of going that road, but uh, we usually stumble upon the, uh, the conclusion that concurrency 101 looks like something on this picture usually, because the first and the most trivial problem you face uh, is to write a, a counter. You face this in your uh, operating system slash concurrency 101 lectures back in the university. And you probably started as a good boy scout to write something like this and then face the hard truth that this is unsafe as you don't have a manner to, to guard the access to your, uh, to your mutable variable called count here. Uh, day by day or year by year, you, uh, you spread your knowledge pool uh, and you are assigned with the task of uh, writing up a software that will transfer uh, an amount from one account to another. And nowadays as a mature concurrent programmer, you know about, uh, about logs, you know about uh, uh, mutual exclusion. You even know how to use volatile properly to avoid uh, all of the potential CPU caches and stale values there. And then you, you end up writing something like this. So you guard your balance as a volatile, you guard it in, a, in synchronized logs and you even check that you, you suspend when you, when you don't have a, an enough uh, amount of money on your account. That's, that everything looks nice. Perhaps it even passes your, uh, your unit tests or your test suits if you have them. And then you end up in a production issue like this where you summon uh, transfer from to two in one uh, thread and two for from in, other, in another thread. And uh, you will be hit with the hard route that this uh, ends up deadlocking itself. And you will also realize that working with locks uh, isn't as nice because uh, they aren't really uh, providing any compositional guarantees and they are very, uh, very error prone. Uh, then you end up exploring the whole uh, possibilities of alternatives. You end up working with actors. You, you've been enchanted by the way how uh, mutability works uh, or being handled by message passing. Uh, you eventually discover functional programming in that and you you end up with a ref and a semaphore or deferred and semaphore blindness, I would say. And you're assigned with a simple task of swapping the values of two refs. You write your uh, beautiful declarative program and potentially uh, want to test its concurrency by repeating it n amounts of time and uh, running these uh, swaps in parallel. Uh, now, if you run this program, even though it looks nice, you will uh, realize quickly that the values you obtain as a sum, instead of being a total sum of the uh, value between two refs, you end up receiving very, uh, very confusing results. Potentially you will return null or zero or 200 or even some uh, very strange values. And uh, this is due to the fact that uh, traditional uh, tools that we are using as functional programmers are not, uh, not keeping their uh, 
transactional guarantees when faced with uh, composability requirements, so to say. So basically, refs in this example are giving us the same guarantees as we would, as we would have been given by actors because uh, refs uh, as well have transactional guarantees only on a single value they hold, not across the, the references. Uh, of course, uh, all of these uh, comes with even more. A learning curve or uh, time to master the concurrency is long. Testability is uh, decreased. Uh, you, you will face various uh, obscure issues, so to say. You will face contention issues. You, will, you need to think about handling interruptions, various sorts of live logs, etc., etc., etc. And this uh, this kind of uh, negates our effort of making our programs readable, testable, uh, and understandable to to a day-to-day -day, uh, colleagues of yours. Uh, now, fortunately, uh, years ago uh, in a Haskell ecosystem, there was an idea to utilize the knowledge uh, from databases and from distributed systems. And basically, the idea is as follows. Uh, let's represent our operations, our mutations, uh, and let's wrap them in a transactional context, which we, we in Zero Universe call ZSD. Uh, let's compose our mutation by flat mapping or mapping across of them. And each of these uh, flat map steps will under the hood in the, in the machinery that ZSTM is carrying with itself, update something called journal. This journal is in essence a journal of changes made to a certain uh, mutable location. And once we are satisfied with how our program looks, we will invoke commit on it. On commit, the whole machinery will evaluate the journal changes and it will either result in a successful ZIO or in case that some of the criteria weren't uh, satisfied or weren't matched, it will cause a retry. Alternatively, in case there was some errors, uh, the whole transactional commit will result in a failed, failed effect that you can further on use. In a, a live setup, the same program with swapping two references uh, would look like this. More, more or less, uh, the code is same, the same, but there are two important differences. First of all, refs we are making are transactional refs. So it was recognized by prefix T usually. And second, you will notice an invocation of STM atomically in a function called swap. STM atomically is equivalent as uh, STM.commit basically, but uh, in my opinion, it reads better when faced with uh, four comprehensions. Once commit, you will get back with, with a zero effect or UIO effect, and you would be able to safely uh, execute the fork, uh, fork swaps as in the previous example, the result will always be as expected 100. Uh, as you can see, uh, Zio STM is quite, uh, quite elegant uh, and quite declarative, which uh, would actually make an average developer a superhero in a concurrency environment. However, implementing it uh, wasn't as trivial. Uh, we went uh, through, I would say, three iterations. So basic iteration were uh, non-stack safe, uh, sort of a prototype uh, building block of a ZSTM, which we built upon uh, to something called uh, executable encoding of ZSTM, uh, which is the one present currently in one point X. In essence, uh, ZSTM was uh, implemented as a value class wrapping over a callback uh, or wrapping over a lambda called exec. And this Lambda was tracking a journal uh, stack size to atomic longs and containing some additional information like fiber ID and uh, all of the environment contents passed to it. Uh, it was also resulting in a T exit, as you can see. Uh, working with it uh, or implementing Combinator on top of it was basically uh, boiling down to uh, using some helper called Continue with Tam, which would allow us to map certain exit values to to follow-up actions. Now, mapping these exit values isn't as trivial because uh, continue with them would have to take care of incrementing the stack on a step-by-step uh, -step basis. It would help to check whether, whether we reach certain amount of max frames and it would help to throw some specialized exception in order to unwind that stack and make the whole ZSTM stack safe. Uh, 
And last but not least, the evaluation loop was heavily relying on, on all that knowledge. So we were basically having to, uh, being forced to run this uh, execution, check whether the stack is empty or not, and then handle this specialized exception in order to reset the stack size counter. Uh, this posed a couple of problems, possessed a couple of problems. Uh, it was, uh, the public API was nice, but the internals were uh, different than the internals we are facing in, for example, Zio itself, uh, and in Zio C value. Uh, it really limits our uh, optimization potential and uh, it sort of proliferates the exit because we were forced to allocate additionally through every single op, uh, command in order to pass uh, T exits here and there. However, uh, it uh, allowed us to build a quite quite huge toolkit on top of it. We have uh, structures like uh, ranging from primitives like transactional references and promises to somewhat complex structures like transactional maps and stats and arrays. Also, uh, we are matching the promise of uh, exposing a composable and declarative API. We are able to uh, guarantee stack safety to an arbitrary long transactions. Uh, by definition, STM is optimistic, so it comes with all of the pros and cons of optimistic concurrency. And uh, the last but not least, it's moderately performant. I am saying intentionally moderately performant because uh, at being optimistic, STM might uh, face situations where retries would be uh, dominant force or dominant impact. Uh, over the time, we provided a mitigation strategy for it, but that mitigation strategy can still be further improved. Uh, on the other hand, in certain scenarios, like for example, in tackling semaphore contentions, that STM performs really, really well. That said, uh, we went to a complete overhaul of ZSTM internals. Uh, we decided to go uh, from executive encoding to a more declarative encoding and design ZSTM as basically a DSL com uh, comprised of a three terms. Uh, provide some, which would serve us to thread the environment information throughout through our transactional steps. Effect, which uh, resembles the old encoding of ZSTM with that uh, lambda passed to it, but uh, as you can see, it doesn't take care of, uh, of the amount of, or of the stack size, uh, and it will also expose us opportunity to uh, tweak or to improve performance of certain combinators. And fault cause M, which is a basis of most of the operations, as you can see above uh, the implementation of flat map in terms of fault cause. Uh, this led to further simplification of run loop. Uh, now, instead of uh, splitting the run loops, the loop, so to say, in uh, handling the continuation and then actually uh, handling the stacks, what we have is uh, just a single function which will peel off uh, st uh, a single stack and it will evaluate stuff in a single pattern match over, over terms. This closely resembles the way how ZSTM is implemented. Also, as uh, Calzio is implemented, sorry. Also, uh, one important thing here, uh, T exit is set inside a run loop rather than only once, rather than being uh, propagated throughout the combinators, which significantly reduced the, the amount of allocation with them. And with that being said, uh, let's see uh, what happened when we benchmarked it uh, against the old implementation. Now, there are two, uh, important remarks to say here. Uh, benchmark was performed on an old uh, runtime system and uh, without any additional or fine-grained micro-optimizations. However, uh, nevertheless, it showed some pro very promising results. First, and I would say the most important benchmark for this is how fast can we do uh, steps chaining or transaction chaining. A uh, usual experiment for this is to calculate some relatively large Fibonacci number uh, in the most inefficient way by recursively flat mapping stuff. And as you can see, the old throughput of about 760 ops per second uh, grow to 960 ops per second. This, uh, I'm saying this is the most, probably the most important operation as mostly in the wild uh, STM is used through, through flat mapping. Uh, individual uh, transactions. Uh, 
uh, one of the largest regression we faced was in benchmarking uh, TQ in various scenarios. Basically, this benchmark uh, measures the way how fast we do offer and take on a TQ of arbitrary size uh, in a sequential way, in a parallel way, and in a situation where Q is very small and faced, uh, faced with a scenario where it has to express its, back, its uh, back pressure capabilities. Uh, for back pressuring and for sequential access, we are observing a decrease in performance, uh, relatively significant, uh, which we will uh, address in uh, hopefully before the first milestone uh, release ship. Uh, the relatively commonly used uh, structure transactional map is also benchmarked through, uh, through various scenarios. Uh, the basic ones for getting delete and put uh, are faced with roughly about 5% uh, decrease uh, or regression, which we will hopefully uh, improve. A uh, good thing is it doesn't uh, get worse with increasing the map. I'm, uh, I'm pasting here the, the benchmark results for map of size 1000, but even with growing up, the map performance stays consistent as expected. Uh, but this, this will hopefully improve with uh, changing the runtime system and maybe even uh, doing an overhaul of uh, team map internals. However, the other scenarios in which we benchmarked and which, which showed really good results is uh, operating on the whole structure. So this is an operation which is uh, common for TMA, but very frequently used for stuff like TRAs or, uh, or TQs or uh, uh, TSATs. We will face that uh, all of the effectful operators like for TMA fold amp and transform amp are uh, having a major performance increase. For example, hold them rose from roughly about 3k operations per second to 5,500 uh, 5, uh, operations per second, which is uh, almost almost double the, double the increase. Uh, that said, uh, in the days to come or in a month to come, I will continue to uh, micro-optimize the STM and hopefully uh, take care of the migration to the new uh, new runtime system, which would, I really hope, result in a very, very significant improvement in performance and stability and hopefully gain its, uh, increase its widespread usage. And I want to thank you all for attending the talk and point out uh, a couple of uh, foundational papers about uh, SDMs, so composable memory transactions, log-free data structures using SDMs in Haskell and beautiful concurrency are all very much recommended uh, works in uh, in the field, which you should take a look at to gain a new perspective on how to use SDM, but also how to design and reason about the concurrent system. Thank you all, and back to you, John.